The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 21st chapter. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be, and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before the kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. The past months and weeks and days have been an interesting time. Some people are excited and happy and celebrating. Some people are sad and frustrated and even fearful. Some express fear of being taken advantage of, of being abused, of being threatened in so many ways. Others just do not see the threat, the abuse, the triggers. Some argue that not seeing the threat is a form of pri privilege. Some suggest that not seeing the threat is merely a sign that there is no real threat. Some people are reeling. Others are angry. Others are mobilizing to make their case. Others are preparing for a new reality. What is clear in all of this is that there are many different ways of seeing and experiencing what is happening. Human beings tend to develop stories to explain what they see. Human beings interpret what they see and hear in light of relationship, in light of every experience, in light of every circumstance that they have in their lifetime. Sometimes those interpretations are accurate, other times not. In conversations with people who are in counseling professions, I hear stories of massive numbers of people in this land who are dealing with trauma. Some of them are near and close to our community. Some are much more distant. The trauma may be obvious to those who are around other times the trauma is not so obvious. Like abuse, sometimes the bruises are obvious, and other times they are hidden. There is a reality that very few of us really knows what is going on with another person. Very few really know the story, the background, the experience. And so, the fear, the trauma, the experience is real and needs to be taken seriously. It is also true 
that in the midst of all of this, some people do not behave well. So in protest of what has happened, some take to the public arena and say and do things that harm person or property. Some feel new freedom to express their long hidden commitments and take it out on those who are vulnerable. In all of this, it is hard to be clear how best to interpret what is being done and said in the best possible light. What is true in the macrocosm of the United States of America is also true in the microcosm of Albion, Nebraska and Zion Lutheran Church. When humanity comes together in community, life gets messy. Relationships can be difficult. It can be easier to retreat to enclaves of like-minded people. The seduction is to quit talking to people who disagree and even to hide one's own disagreement. The fracturing of relationships and the potential for doing harm to one another is great. In today's gospel, the church hears about Jesus continuing a conversation that began last week with a challenge. You may remember that challenge about the reality of the resurrection. Jesus is in conversation with Sadducees and scribes and a whole collection of people that includes his disciples. Apparently some in the crowd were proudly looking at the temple. How beautiful the building. How hard their families and their community had worked to put it all together. There was heritage. There was a sense that God was present even home in that place. There was security. And Jesus responded, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. These are hardly words of consolation in troubling times. And the people had questions. They wanted to know when these things will take place. And what Jesus says next may not be that helpful. He points to conflict and war and natural disasters. He talks about people who stand up and make claims on behalf of God and on his own behalf. Jesus warns about those people and then he warns the people to be clear, to focus on the true reign of God that is manifest. In Jesus' proclamation from the very beginning, he has been inviting people to see their relationship and experience through different eyes. The invitation is an invitation to repent, to be changed in mind and heart, and spirit. The invitation is to believe in the reign of God that has come near. And in this reign of God, Jesus has announced early in his ministry, there is good news for the poor. There is release for the captives. There is healing, recovery of sight for the blind. There is freedom for the oppressed. These blessings are not just for the insiders, for the elect, for the folks who look like us. They are for those who look different, who believe differently, who behave differently. These blessings are for all people, for all creation. I'm reminded of several times when I have heard pa Pastor Nadia Boltz Weber speak about life in the church. <laughs> and she tells the story about when she meets with new members who are joining their church. And as she meets them with them as the pastor of that congregation, 
She tells them that as they join the congregation, at some point, the pastor or the congregation, or somebody within that community is going to say or do something that will bring disappointment, will bring anger, will bring frustration. And she asks them to make a commitment on this side of the frustration, on this side of the anger, on this side of the disappointment. And that commitment is a commitment to remain in community when it happens. Don't bolt. Know that it will happen. The day will come when somebody will say or do something that causes distress. So before it happens, make the commitment to remain, to keep community. To remain even in the midst of the messiness of relationships as congregation. And Pastor Nadia goes on to say that only when the faithful make that commitment and live it, can the faithful then see God's power for reconciliation forgiveness, and new life. The church is a messy place. People are often doing the very best that they know how. Sometimes people get it right. Other times, they don't. None of that changes the witness that Jesus calls the community to live. Jesus says, this will be your opportunity to witness, to testify. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends. And yet the testimony is to God's activity in love. God's activity for reconciliation. God's activity for forgiveness. God's activity for new life. Now, when people come to Zion Lutheran Church and are joining this congregation, they are asked to make public profession, to make at public affirmation of their baptism. Now, oftentimes, the whole congregation is invited to join them. So I want to ask you for just a moment to take a look at that. Reach into your Pew Rack, I know those books that are in there, those red ones that we rarely touch. And turn in the front of the book. I'm also aware that when we pull out a book that we rarely touch, we have to give roadmap. So page 238, or 236, 236, 236. That's the page numbers at the bottom of the page. The big numbers at the top of the page are typically hymn numbers. So we're looking for page 236. At the top of that page is an affirmation. It starts with the pastor saying, You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in, the ho in holy baptism? Now let's read those commitments together. To live among God's faithful people to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. That is the call for the faithful. May it be so in the microcosm, so too in the macrocosm of our nation.